so what all the things you can do with ngs so you here just just an example like in a cell when we say dna uh, dna has a lot of components right and all these names are familiar to you all like from chromatin rna nucleosome and dna but what things you can perform so you can perform ngs on if you are doing healthy versus disease or trying to find out rare variants the for rare genetic diseases you can extract out whole blood pbmcs or cell free dna this is also a very new field it is there in the market for quite a some time but not all of them all of us have adapted this field cell free dna so this is also useful to study cf dna for biomarker analysis then again metagenomics if you want to metagenomics can be gut microbiome or can be from environmental samples can be bacterial or fungus or algae population from a soil or some space anything transcriptomics you might all know about single cell rna seq population rna seq non coding rna small rns like mirna sirnas and other things epigenomics contains protein dna binding dna dna binding rna dna binding all those kind of things come under epigenomics and then the genomics is already there like uh, generating whole genome sequences if sequence is already not known then using exome sequencing or genome sequencing to identify new variants for the disease or new we i can say the reason in the genome which can be affecting the health of a health, health can be anything like the human health or the plant health or anything these kind of things you can do and these are the trends which are emerging in ngs having said that let's go and see some examples how we can do these things how these are useful in the field so we will go quickly and see the application and cases of ngs here i am trying to show how this thing in human health the ngs in human health is beneficial so starting from you can say the marriage and uh, so there is a big problem going on in uh, i can say about uh, india i am not sure but it is a world wide problem that uh, beta thalassemia is not been screened before conceiving a child so beta thalassemia could be minor or major and lot of lot of us might already know someone in our family or in friend which are having beta thalassemia minor just for example is just an example of a disease it could be anything any genetic disease so let's say if i am a carrier of a genetic disease let's say minor beta thalassemia and i don't know if my partner is the carrier of that same disease and we get married we plan our family and we don't go for a screening so there are a lot of chances that in in future when we plan a baby the baby sh sh might be carrying uh, the, that allele of uh, be, let's say that genetic disease allele from both of us from my partner also from me also and that will make my child a major not the carrier but the uh, you can say that it will carry because if if the allele comes from both of us defective allele so child will get the disease for sure but if it is come a defective allele is coming from let's say me and a good allele is coming from my partner the child might be a carrier it will not show the symptom it will have the problems but again in child's future again the risk of transferring that genetic disorder will be high but if the child is getting the allele from both the parents uh, it's it, it's medically very 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 expensive process and the future of child is at risk so yeah so 